We'll call this March 9th, Brown County Commission meeting to order. Commissioner Sutt, would you lead the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, and I apologize for the late start. We have a little communication problem on our phone. Uh, at any time, if somebody has a question, you may have to speak up or on a cell phone at this time. Uh, first item on the agenda is the, is the approval of the agenda. So move. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Weiss to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, uh, Dirk Rogers, Highway Superintendent. We have a right away with BDM, Rural Water, and NBC. Hi there. Hi there. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is probably my worst <laughs> spot. I would think of it. How are you guys today? Good. Morning. You? Good. Um, I got four right-of-ways, and let's do the. There's one for uh, uh, BDM. I want to do that one first. It goes into Wig Lightners. This is Road Nine going to Claremont, and it's just a bore under the road to put a new water service in right here for him. I think it's fine. Moved by Kipley, second by Piker to approve the right of way for BDM Real Water. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Um, okay, this, these other three are all for Northern Valley. And Northern Valley is doing a big giant, uh, I don't know what you call it. They're updating everything. And I met with them a couple weeks ago, so they're going to be, I would assume for the next so many, pretty much all summer, I'm going to be bringing in these three or four permits at a time that are in an area. Um, these, these next three are going to cover a pretty large chunk of county road, but in general, uh, almost all these with James, uh, Northern Valley is they're just updating everything from copper, taking it up to uh, uh, fiber. And uh, so that's pretty much what, what all they are. So this first one is for road six. From the Greasy Spoon, 23 and six there. And it goes all the way down to two miles north. So those four miles. And what they're doing is updating in the ditch and then there'll be anywhere they have to, there's four locations where they're gonna bore. <coughs> They'll have to bore through the road, just like everybody else. So um, I'd recommend that one for approval. Move to approve. Second. Move by Sutton, second by Kipley to approve the NBC uh, bore under county road. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. This is the year to do it. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then there's, this is the exact same thing I was just talking about, except this piece is just up here further to the north. This goes from 137 down to 139, so just for these two miles. And for whatever reason, that's just where they need to update it, and then there's two borders underneath road six Move for it. that one as well. Second. Move by five, second by seven to approve uh, an NBC right away. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, <coughs> motion carries. Are they doing all their placement in the right away or in private? Um, it's kind of a mixture. These are, I think they're going to go basically where it is now. For the most part, these guys are in the right away. It's not like the old web one where they put that in and then they said, well, that's where Eastman is, where the pipe is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I would assume a lot of this is going to be in the back of the ditch because they're going to, you know, be, they're going to want their pedestals and all that stuff. They're not going to move too much of it. So for the most part, these guys are in our ditch. The so run, now they the run the leaf out him. Yep, yep. Well, I'll be just curious. Bored. Yeah, they'll, they'll, uh, they got to bore all the, that's kind of my, yeah. that's my thing for everything. And I might touch on that topic a little bit here after we hopefully approve this one. But this is uh, same story. Same, this is the whole project, and this one is going from one, two, three miles west, so we're from road two, and this, this one's going to go all the way into, into Warner there. Move it. Second. Move by Fikert, second by Sutton, to approve another NBC uh, right away. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. If next week I get, or the next time we get multiple, do you just want to 
have me explain them all and do it with one motion or does it matter? Either way. I so think the think they're gonna see a ton of them come through because they're gonna be installing all new fiber everywhere for rural areas and it's not replacing, they're going through everything and they're putting a ton of fiber in. So we're gonna have a boatload of these and I don't know yeah. that. If it's like one big project, you could probably do them together. Okay. Unless one is gonna be controversial, I don't know. Okay. Well those I mean, like those three in my opinion were all they're all basically in the same spot, the same Probably able to adapt. Right. And there's a reason they submitted those three together to us at this time, you know. So I'm sure we'll probably just by function of the way it will go, we'll get them in, in logical clusters, groups, I would think. So they move from the count area to area. So they'll um, all still be reported to the public and reported individually in the minutes. So that aspect will still be there. Okay. That they're all listed, but sure. Um uh, on the thing with boring, because I'm running into the the first time that well, it's not the first time. Everybody wants to cut the roads, and I just I'm kind of at an absolutely no, um, no exceptions deal. But even gravel, even if it's a crappy road, you know I've got lectured. Oh, I'm really going to make the road worse by cutting through it, you know. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's and and I'm going to be bringing up one next week that's for a uh, uh, egg producer that's going to, he wants to put in a water line, which we do that all the time, except he wants to go out and dig down about three inches and push it down, it, you know, so I, mm -hmm. we're going to have to watch him, watch that one, but um, so just so you know, that's, I've made no exceptions. We even made them bore up there, <coughs> you know, so it, we've been pretty consistent about that. Um, I have a bridge resolution for our bridge inspections that came in yesterday. I would like to have run it through if you aren't comfortable with doing it. It's the same bridge inspection resolution we do with uh, the state every year. It just wasn't on the agenda and I never know if I should point that out or just try running it through. But um, it's up to you guys. If not, we'll do it next week. But it's just our, it's the same one we do every year um, for the bridge inspections. Time sensitive, is it? It's kind of time sensitive. I got it on the 5th. I see it came in and they said take this to your next commission meeting. Well, the agenda was out by the time I mm -hmm. got it. So I'm, it, I don't have a whole, whole bunch of heartburn about it. I'm assuming they're trying to catch most of the counties that have the, you know, not every, some of them just have their one meeting probably mm -hmm. today and then they're not meeting the rest yeah. of them on. So some are every other summer. Yeah, we'll if, if, the agenda for if you're a little nervous, I'll, we can do our next week or so. Just a thank you, boy. Can I just give this? Yeah, we'll go with the commissioner with his recommendation. Can I give this to you now so I don't... Yeah. That way if you lose it, it's your fault. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks for the responsibility. Yeah, that's, <coughs> well, that's all I got unless you guys have anything else. Just while Dirk's here, um, I, I think everybody got the notification on the Elm Lake Dam. Oh, yeah. Funding approval. Yep. Um, went to the governor's desk yesterday, I believe, so... Hopefully we'll see some progress. I talked to Ryan last night, and sounds like he'll be back up to uh, obviously talk to Dirk and, and you folks, and Good. and uh, we'll start working on the emergency plan and stuff like that. So, good deal. Yeah, it sounds like uh, getting dangerously close. Whether that you know we haven't finalized the end kind or whatever the heck you guys are gonna decide that we're gonna do, but. Uh, that certainly was, when I saw that, I'm like, all right, we're getting dangerously close instead of, I get tired of trying to do a $6 million job with $2.2 .2 million, and it just gets so damn frustrating after a while. So to actually have something where the timing or whatever you want to say, at least at least we'll have some money to throw at it. So you know, we'll get an idea what sort of funding's available, and it's yep. fairly generous, but it'll allow some leeway to do a pretty significant redesign to, you yep. So the actual design and stuff is not set yet? Um, they're working through that. The last thing that I was doing with any type of technical rough relevance with them was the historical clearance for getting rid of the bridge. And I was trying to push them to use that, the bridge itself when they tear it out, to use it, incorporate it into the project so we're not hauling that thing out and then turn around and hauling rock in. And the county way of doing stuff doesn't always <laughs> translate the best, but I have to admit if this was us, we'd be hacking that bridge into small pieces and throwing it over in the washout and getting the value out of it. Now, 
how the state and the environmental folks, but now we've we've also streamlined that program, so maybe the environmental thing will be easier now. I don't know. Well, I think they've been up there on a pretty regular basis. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fall and winter working, surveying, and... Yeah, they're taking a fresh look of where the spillway and yep. the emergency spillway design is going to look like, and I think that may be altogether different than what it looks like right now. You know, for whatever reason, and you guys, I just get the feeling what happened to the auxiliary spillway was a little bit of a, I don't think they expected that to happen. I mean, even though it took that water, I mean, I think they expected that that water was supposed to go over there. The bottom I, just, of the toe. I think they were a little horrible. surprised at what ended up happening with, with the way that went apart. And the other thing I was laughing about when they were reluctant to put that bridge down there, I don't know if you guys have the opportunity to go on a nature hike and go walk down in there. That fill has got bicycles and clotheslines and burn barrels and... And it's stuff that's so deep that you're talking, we're, you're looking back through probably a hundred years or, mm -hmm. you know, back to whatever they built it, you know. But there is, I, I always laugh, well, we can't put that in there. And I go, well, what about the, the <laughs> bicycle and the clothesline and the old UHF antenna that's wedged don't, in the side? Don't say it. too much. They'll make us go in there and take it all out. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't put it there. So <laughs> is there somewhere that folks who have a couple calls, people just wanting to be in the know on how that's going and what's going to happen? Are there reports being published online or is there any, like, informational meetings or how do folks keep abreast of how that's going to happen in a time frame? I, we, my office got a few calls uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, and, and um, I, I gave them as much information as I could and then actually gave them school and public lands, okay. you know, direct number and told them to call Ryan because that way they could get the most update. Now, when I talked to Ryan yesterday, um, it sounds like, like I said, he's planning on being up to talk about the in-kind function and, and the rest of it. So I'm guessing we'll probably get an update here uh, fairly soon now that that things are moved through the <coughs> legislative process. So I I think to your as far as like a real time thing, um, I don't know that that exists yet. But anytime I've talked with with Ryan or that office, there I mean they would they're willing to Talk to yeah convey the information however it would be you know. Okay. Um, so I. You know, it would be great if you could just go and have a real-time camera sitting there like everybody wants now and just <laughs> sit and watch it. The dam's getting fixed. Mm -hmm. but, you know. Well, good. like you said, you know, they're doing their due diligence. They contacted me, you know, yep. about the uh, historical background and access and the rest of that stuff with the bridge and the rest of it. So they're working through it and trying um, to gather information. And I haven't ever heard any more about doing anything with the fishing area. And whether that's even important, you know, from the construction standpoint. But I do find it funny that they put all the guys that take their ice shacks out there, take them up to that spot we're talking, up to the north on the east side there. And then right before you turn, there's a slope that goes down. Well, that's where they, they've been using that area to put their fish shacks on there anyway. So I was kind of thinking, gosh, there's got to be something you can do on there. But, but I spoke with uh, Ticho from Richmond, Lima, oh, who who maintains that, that area up there, and he had concerns because they had just put that new porta potty up there, that new uh, outhouse up there, and that kind of stuff on, you know, if they needed a plan to move that, and, and of course, I didn't have answers for that, so he was going to call Ryan. Now, I don't see where that, where that I don't know where that went, but um, I know that that, that that group is has been involved with it, so okay. I'm assuming that. Well, I guess that would be the question, too, then. Whether mm -hmm. at what point or if they have already made a decision whether or not they're going to uh, have a crop so that you can cross the dam to get to the other side. And I'm not sure where that's at once they take the bridge out. I mean, it, is there any idea how that's being engineered? Um, it's, it's part of the, I mean, it's part of the project. They're evaluating it. I, the last, and I have no idea, of, I mean, the last time I ever talked to anybody about that, it was not going to be a, um, a road or a, you know, it would probably be something. The main, the main reason anybody needs to get across there is so the city can get to the valves <coughs> for the water. And the um, emergency spillway. And, the, and to get over to the emergency spillway. Um, you know, and there might be a consideration because it's hard getting in there. I mean, with a four-wheeler, we could come in from the west, but it wouldn't be like a, a quick and easy deal. Right. But uh, I don't want the 
fishing and recreation and game and fish people to lose their mind for what I'm about to say, but the way I look at that, if we can work something out for that, that's great, but the amount of money we're talking about for the bridge and the amount of potential cost if the county has to maintain a bridge in there on top of, you know what I mean? It's just like the bridge to nowhere. Yeah, there's no value in it. And, and I'm not discounting the folks up at, at Elm Lake because they've done a good job of trying to promote that and all that up there, and that's great. But the reality of it is we're talking about a huge project, and to get hung up on the freaking fishing dock is something that I'll, I'm kind of, eh. So, but I like fishing and hunting and all that's great, Doug. <laughs> I think okay. they can. <laughs> well, I think I think there's other options with the chunk of land that the county does yeah. own to the north <coughs> for that type of yeah, I of, think so too uh, of recreation or access. So on the east side, and and I don't want to get. I guess the way I'm looking at it, and I don't know what your guys' perceived obligation of the county is. I'm talking big picture relative to this whole project, but. I'm looking at the bridge, all right? I keep looking at the bridge. That's a million dollars. Let's get rid of the bridge somehow and and do that. Um, so if we're talking with Game and Fish and they're going, well, geez, we can't, we don't have a way to move the porta potty, uh, <laughs> we'll go move the damn porta potty. I mean, it, it, we got to keep things in perspective on what the goal is. You know, that's all I'm saying with that. I don't want to get hung up because they need five loads of sand to build a beach down there, and that's what we're going to get hung up on. You know, that's. I don't want that to happen. Mm. So. Sounds good. Thank you. Anything else you want me to just ramble on about? <laughs> no point at all, or no. But for informational purposes, it was in the public. But there is a Zoom meeting tonight on the Game Fish and Parks plan about redoing the spillway at the Minor Lake Dam. Okay. And my understanding is the integrity of the dam is not the issue, but the structure of the spillway. And so there's going to be an open conversation about what they're hoping or planning to do, which includes some drawdown and some other things with I that. I think so that's ongoing from the damage where I do more permanent repair type of thing on replacement. But that's open to the public and that information is out there. And I believe it's at 6.30 tonight. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, sorry. Have a great day. You, you as well. Thank you. Thanks. Next time we have Scott Mites. Tony Burnman. Good morning. Captain. Sorry, I brought it down like them. Never, never hurts to get a little update. <laughs> a little update. Um, Burnman. I met with the uh, county fire chiefs last night, and they uh, they are requesting an emergency ban to be put in place um, due to the uh, very dry conditions um, and lack of snow moisture. Um, and also uh, road condition with the frost coming out, um, those heavy trucks rumbling around um, for sometimes no reason is uh, uh, we were out Sunday up uh, north of Columbia and I, I didn't say this when Dirk was in, I didn't want to rally him anymore, but uh, on County 9 up there, which uh, I don't say we, we didn't tear it up, but you could sure feel it was it was pretty squishy even with my truck beside the big water tender. So. Um, again, uh, they had a unanimous vote last night to request this from the commission um, to uh, to ban all open burning, burn barrels, campfires, um, all control burns through April 6th. So that would be the first county commission meeting in April, and then we would revisit it uh, at that meeting. Would that change if we have to get three, four inches of snow over this week? Well, I, I think that that was one of the things that I mentioned to them. You know, there's snow in the forecast uh, tomorrow. There's snow in the forecast, uh, rain or something for early next week. And, uh, and you know, they, they completely understood that. And, and their goal is to, you know, hopefully get a little, a little moisture and, and a few more warm temps and just buy a little time to green it up out there a little bit um, to slow the spread down. Um, they had they've had three out of control control burns that have had some had to have some pretty big responses uh, in the last uh, seven days. Um, two of them could have uh, burned two businesses down east of town, and the second one uh, had very high potential. In fact, uh, burned right up to a guy's house and and his barn, um, which which could have been a a, a, a loss to him. Um, 
the third one was some electrical poles. We lost a couple electrical poles, so um, it's, it's just it's it's super dry. I mean, it's it's tinder. Um, the one the one uh, Sunday was a burn barrel. A spark jumped out of a burn barrel. Um, we've been in uh, either very high um, for the last I think five days. We've been in very high fire danger, including today. Um, again, they, their, their goal is to buy some time here for a couple weeks, three weeks or so. Um, they're thinking if we can take it off that early April, it'll still give uh, the folks that need to do some burning a little time before they're getting into the fields. Um, you know, the ground, is, the frost is coming out, but it's pretty hard to get a, get a disc in the ground yet right now. Um, <coughs> and again, uh, they're, they're kind of worried if, if they do get something, they're going to be able to get trucks down some of these roads or in some of these fields. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll move it. I'll second it. You guys doing the full month? Unless. Effective unless burn van effective tomorrow or to what? Immediately. Time? Starting immediately through April, the meeting on April 6th. And like I said, and then we would revisit it unless something drastically changes before then and then we could we could just take it off. Does that need to be in the motion? That unless circumstances. I, I did type up a resolution, I guess, if you want to. Can we go to two weeks to see and then continue it on in two we weeks? We could do that too. Month, go a two long weeks. way to go if we get all yeah. the Well, we're about two weeks, aren't we? That'd be four stop. weeks. That's a full month away. Yeah, I just... I know our temps are going to go down a little bit uh, this week and part of next week. But we um, can continue it on in two weeks. Today's the 9th, and you're looking at April the 6th. Yeah, we could, we could revisit it on the 30th. <clears throat> That'd be three weeks, right? I'd be good with that. So just change April 6th to March 30th. So your motion would reflect to start immediately to Did revisit it on March 30th. Yep. 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 And we have a motion from Pfeiffer and a second from Sutton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Perfect. Thank you. You'll notify the appropriate yep, I got, Scott. I got media releases okay. somewhat typed up. I'll get dates. Kathy, do you want me to type up that new date and email it over to you? Yeah, we would prefer an email word document. Yep, I can do that. Paper. I will fix that and, and then get that over and we'll get the media releases out. Um, I don't think there's, we talked about Elm Lake, just the weather coming in, a couple, couple two, three inches possible. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Anything else for me? COVID's still uh, moving through. Our, our numbers are, are looking okay, considerably better. Um, vaccination numbers continue to rise. Uh, yesterday's, uh, we were, Brown County was about 19.4% uh, vaccinated. Um, so I, I think that's pretty good. That was two shots then? Completely that's, that's considering only some okay. people could only have one shot. Okay. Um, so um, I know uh, talking with both hospitals this last week, uh, more doses or higher dose numbers are, are coming into the county. Um, I know uh, they're ramping up to, to get those, to get those uh, doses out as soon as possible. So I think we'll start seeing that process as we get more in move through that process a little faster so um, and it sounds like some are getting a single dose now some are getting yep the Johnson and Johnson is 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 here and and it's a one shot it's not as effective as the other two but it's still better than, than nothing. so um, even if you've had it and got antibodies um <laughs> You know, um, it, I'll say visit with your doctor on that. It depends on me, yeah. I yeah. did. He said, it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's scientific. I, uh, yeah. I had my one shot very organized at Avera through the, on the first street. Yep. And I'll tell you, talk about organization. They were very organized and how that went through. I mean, there was a ton of people when I got there. It was like, it was more dangerous to go in the parking lot than it was going to get the shot, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Well oiled machine. <laughs> we, um, and, and, and yeah, both of the hospitals have been doing an outstanding job. Uh, my office is meeting with both of them on Friday to talk about maybe a, a larger scale event uh, moving on. So with, like I said, with more doses coming in, probably going to tax those facilities. 
So we're going we're, we're going down that path to see something needs to be done. So. Well, what I've seen is I didn't see this problem so much intermediate inside the building. The problem I've seen was the parking lot. You know, there just wasn't enough area for these cars to be motorating around. And I mean, it was kind of kind of iffy where you were going to go because there was people backing up and going in. And I mean, it was a the parking lot. That, that is one of the things on our agenda is 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 traffic and parking and where we would do something like this so we don't create issues. So, anything else for me? Otherwise, I'll get out of your hair. All right. I appreciate that. I'll get you that stuff and and uh, yeah. A good week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, fairly agenda items. Kathy, you want to go through your? Yes, we have minutes from March 2nd. Move. Second. Move by Sutton, second by Weiss to approve the March 2nd minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Claim. Move. Claim. Move by Biker, second by Kipley to approve claims. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. HR report? Move. Second. Move by Sutton, second by Weiss to approve the HR report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Quick claim deed? Move. Aye. Move by Fikert, second by Weiss to mm. approve the quick claim deed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 2020 financial report? Move. Aye. Move by Sutton, second by Weiss to approve the 2020 financial report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That violence grant application letter? Move. Second. second. <laughs> we, we have a motion by Weiss, second by Kipley to approve the stop violence grant application. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Abatement. Move. Second. Moved by Fiker, second by Sutton to approve the abatement. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Kathy? Always that. Anything else for coming before the board? Public comment? Any other items? Kevin? Yeah, yeah. Hi, um, my name is Kevin Brown, and uh, I live just outside of the city limits, down by the school. And I've uh, been working with Mr. Bader here close to a year to build a second residence on my property, my grandkids and son in law, for them, not for me. Uh, and, and I don't know, we, should we put this on the agenda for next week to? to explain. I just want to explain it. You can briefly. explain it today, Kevin, yeah. and then if we want to take any action, we put it on the agenda. All right, yeah, but anyway, just to give everybody kind of where we're at. Um, so I went in front of the the zoning board commission, I guess, and received a approval for uh, two residences on Miniag with the ex with Rachel put uh, with the uh, stipulation of receiving an easement to that second residence. Uh, went to my attorney to do that and he says you cannot give yourself an easement from because I own all the ground right now. So he, he says there's no reason to do an easement. Uh, the hang up, I guess for a better word, I, my driveway Access road is a half a mile long from Melgard, off of Melgard to, to my prop part of my property. And um, I'd like to remain that private for a few reasons. Uh, safety of the children down there. And uh, Mr. Bader and I have been talking about this. And if I dedicate it to the public, with, I'd have private maintenance. Uh, I would not expect the county to maintain it. I've met with the township. They don't really want to take care of it. I'm fine with that. I've been maintaining it since I've lived out there for 10 years or better. Uh, it just gives some separation from the general public to where I'm at. <clears throat> Secondly, if I dedicate that, it would allow the landowners on either side to potentially develop lots along there and come in and out of this road when then I'd be probably have to maintain it at the end. So why would it allow someone else? You can have it as a dedicated easement but not available to the public. Uh, 
So I'm, a, I'm assuming that you're going to be plotting a separate piece out for the other house for that's finance purposes? That's what I'm trying to do, yes. State law requires that when you get that plat, that it have access, dedicated access, a driveway or an easement, so that's not a landlocked piece of property. Right. So there has to be a legal access to that piece of property from public, right, from public transportation. Perfect. That's it. I guess, but then that opens it up to the adjoining. No, it can still be private property, but that what it says is that planted piece of property has dedicated access to public transportation. Is the new lot going to be in your son-in-law's name? Yes, eventually. So Once then that would fix it. it. I'm going to donate or sell it to them for a dollar. But the easement doesn't mean the public has free reign. It's still private property. What it says is this keeps the property, and if it sells to somebody that you're not related to, they will have the right to use that to get to that access, that piece of property. But it doesn't make it public. It's still private property. It says whoever owns this planted piece of property has the right to use it to get to it that it's not landlocked, that you don't have to take a helicopter to get to it or whatever. You can drive to it from a public thoroughfare and it's required by state law to have that access for a planted piece of property. They have to be adjacent to a public right of way. Yeah. I guess my, my uh, question is you can't put an easement on your own property? Sure you I, I, I mean, didn't you say that your attorney told you you couldn't put a easement on your own property? He can't give himself an easement on his own property because I haven't plotted it yet, this, this parcel, because I kind of have a standoff on this road issue. Once it would, the plot would get plotted and approved, then I believe you can get an, give an easement to that. My it goes together with it. When you approve the plat, the plat has to include access. Right. So okay. the easement is approved with it yeah. at the same time. You can give an easement like to web water yeah. or utilities, right. but not to itself. Mm -hmm. But I haven't so you get an easement to the public is what you end up doing. No, this is an easement access to the piece of property. That platted piece of property, this is the dedicated, understood way that you get to it whatever it happens to be. And if they, and well, like then Scott he, said, if it's along the highway, then it means, you know, it's got to have the setbacks or approved approach access to it, which is fine, or if it's conjoined with a piece of property, we have pieces of property because of the 500 foot separation where, you know, it's been developed and they're closer than that, where they actually share a driveway on the property line of both and they essentially have a small easement on that corner to use each other's corner a piece of property to share that if it goes deeper into it they can do that or if it's a frontage uh, lots of different examples of, of those kinds of situations so then who will be who will the easement be for them it will be tied to the new plat or that piece of property right if you have reason to access that piece of property, that's how you So then your attorney would be wrong because it really would be your own easement until you take that's that exactly plot. exactly my point. It. So can exactly. you do that? Is, I mean, it's if it's that simple, it would fix it. 100% my point. Can you do that? I don't know. From a practical standpoint, that's how you, they anticipate getting to that property once it's built up, right? They're going to use the same driveway. Yes, absolutely. And all it's saying is legally is that piece of property is going to use that driveway to get to it. It's still your private property, but whoever owns that piece of property that's platted, whether it's your family or if it turns around and sells in the future to somebody else, they have a right to get to it, and that's how. The access easement will follow that for sale at that moment. Mm -hmm. Technically, you're giving Go ahead, Vader. on your own property is what you're doing. Yeah. For your own use. Scott? He has a half mile road and then he has 10 acres, 25. 25 acres in a square. And that road goes to the center of that square. Mm -hmm. So he wants to plat off a one acre parcel inside there. The Planning and Zoning Commission gave him a, uh, a variance to have two residences on one piece of property. 
to do that, he has to have an easement to come through on that road to get to that house. It's an unplatted one acre. The house would be built on the one piece of property. So that has been approved by the zoning board to do that. He wants to plat the one acre separate for his son for financial purposes, for lending, mm -hmm. or for his son-in-law. And he wants to have an easement on that half mile road coming into that piece of property. That does not meet our ordinance requirements when you have to have your lot adjacent to public right of way, emergency management, emergency response, uh, 911 addressing. There's all kinds of things that come into play with having that easement rather than a public right of way. A public right of way can be dedicated as public right of way but be a private road. And then talking with Ross, several times now we've told Kevin to go to an attorney and see if you can't come up with something that protects your two border lines of that road from someone developing adjacent to it. But I haven't heard anything on that yet. So Bader, you're saying the easement doesn't fix the problem? No. It's still against our ordinance? All right. <coughs> If he does not plat the property, he'll have an easement to get to that house and have two houses on one on one piece of property, and that's all approved. But if he's going to plat that property separate, that parcel has to be adjacent to public right of way. That's how we address them: is adjacent to public right of ways. Uh, just having an easement access in that half mile and then up to that yard. There's several parts of our ordinance that it doesn't mean. Yeah. And I've explained that several times. And he's going to have to plat it in order to get financing to build the house. Right. The bank won't Correct. finance without a platted parcel by, by itself. Right. So then the drawing that we had was that you have a public right-of-way dedicated up to that, coming in 200 foot, because you got to, in mini egg, you have to have a 200 foot frontage. So if the road came in 200 feet, the platted parcel would be adjacent, have a 200 foot frontage. The other 24 acres would also have a 200 foot frontage up to that road. And then when he wants to plat the other four lots in the future, he would continue that road and they would all have a 200 foot frontage. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff to this project. It's not just the access. Mm -hmm. So would this be, excuse me, would this be considered in the in your subdivision ordinance? Uh, talks here, subdivision is the division of a lot or parcel into two or more lots. Mm -hmm. So I think of doing that. And then in the teeth of this for access, But there's many more parts of the ordinance that go with it, Kevin, that, yeah, I, yeah. that I showed you all that right. stuff. But, but they talk about access, subdivision roads permanently dedicated as public right-of-way or shown as private roads. So I'm, I'm confused on why we can't go with the pub private road. We're subdividing one lot into two, and you got it right here. There's two or three places in here that talks about it says uh, acceptance of the road or the owner's certificate, private roads, and then uh, another spot here. Well, it can still be private and be identified. You know, it's a little bit different situation, but example here in Aberdeen, for instance, is the loop that goes behind where Klein's used to be and around. That's not a city street. That's a private piece of road. It's public. It's dedicated for public access. No one's trespassing when they're driving on it, but it's private maintenance. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what That's I That's the way it was but developed, and it was never taken, given to or accepted by the city. Right. But when it was dedicated, with the word dedicated for public use. It allows the neighbors to access it, right? 
or UPS or right. No, I'm fine. I'm, 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 I'm fine with them. I'm worried. What I'm concerned about is the neighbors put six lots on either side of this road now, and I'm on the end having to maintain it. And that would be the part that you would talk to an attorney, is what Ross said, to, mm -hmm. to come up with some agreement. My attorney. And people cannot develop a, adjacent to that. He says it's as you right dedicated road. to the public, it opens it, it's wide open, it's usable. But if they're going to develop it, then also means they're going to have a responsibility to maintain it if it's going to increase the regular traffic flow. Our stipulations your attorney ought to be able to put into it. <laughs> if there's a but road district or a housing authority, it can be written up that anything developed adjacent to that road have to join that authority mm -hmm. for maintenance purposes. It's just frustrating to, for one plot, to have to do this. The problem is looking into the future, whether it's two years or 25 years down the road, there's going to be more stuff that's going to be split and developed. And not paying attention to these details now creates bigger problems later. Because we've had those situations where somebody's got a landlocked piece of property and one that comes to mind is because of flooding. It had dedicated access, but because of high water on a consistent basis, it no longer did. And it went to court trying to say, well, I've got to have access to my property. Well, you had access, but now it's flooded. So where is the situation with that? And that's why I want to do this before he builds, so he has right. a piece of ground under the, under the building, mm -hmm. you know. But technically, you buy a, you have a piece of property, you split it into two, you are now a developer. And that's where this stuff comes along with it, because more will follow. Just made so up why, why doesn't the private road language in here apply? Well, like Scott did, there, there's other pieces in different places that apply. It's not all duplicated in one spot. But you can, put, re you can put restrictions, down. covenants, you know, however they want to word it. I'm not an attorney, but it says, you know, this access is here, but if you're going to start using it more for future development and the rest of that kind of stuff, you need to participate in this to step it up. Otherwise, in the meantime, this is what I'm using it for. So do you actually, what's the right of way there? What is it? 66 feet. Six, is it a section line? Uh, half mile line. Half mile line. So See, who owns it? I do. You own that piece of property? From my 25 acres, the road is 4 acres up to Mill Garden. Well, I would think you, you should, should be able, through an attorney, to be able to put some stipulation on your road, your piece of property that you own, through an attorney, what kind of uh, maintenance there's going to be there if there's development along that. If you own it, it's yours, needed to you, I would think you'd have, I mean, wouldn't that make sense? If mm -hmm. you'd have the opportunity to say how that's going to be maintained if somebody was going to build along there? With the, with the private maintenance, uh, anyone that develops something along that road yeah. should have to join that maintenance group, whether it's a road district or a housing district, a HOA, or... I, mean, I so would think that you can require that. To some extent, you I mean, you kinda, you've got development over the barrel there. If you own that, I mean... Yeah, that's why I don't want to give it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do for, for the buffer. Is there somewhere else in Brown County we've done something similar to this? I mean, we talked a little bit about the businesses by clients, but is there another residential area that he could get kind of a heads up on how to go about? The one I can think of would be west of town. It's got White Hill Deer Development out there, but they have a covenant in place that for all those homes that are built out there, they pay, say, $200 a year just to help to maintain that road and that development. Their HOA. Their yeah. HOA. Okay. Cattail Drive had that problem. Big time. The exact problem mm -hmm. yep. that they had their right of way, and then <coughs> the landowner on the west side developed three or four lots adjacent to that. But Cattail Drive didn't have any wording, they didn't have a road district, they didn't have anything as far as the maintenance of the road. So that was the problem with that right up front. I would think you could learn from those folks what works and what doesn't and get something like this done. And I know right now you're thinking, what the heck, this is a lot of hoops to jump through for just me and wanting one house. But I understand too where we're coming from is that 
it could be three, four, five houses down the road if you decide to plot off some other sections. So we got to take care of the future too. Well, I, th I think uh, Rachel in this, uh, I, get, I keep going back to the subdivision road standards, which is county ordinance. The intent of this exception is for single family residents only. If this parcel or adjacent parcels are further developed or subdivided for residential use, all applicable zoning ordinances, subdivision ordinances, and road standards shall be in effect going forward. After. You're going to have two residents. One plus the one I'm in. Okay. Yeah. But subdivision back here talks about dividing one lot into two or more is the definition of subdivision. And the mini egg district requires that you, when you develop a lot, that you have a minimum 200 foot frontage. How do you satisfy that with the easement? 200 foot frontage. Oh. The same way with rural address C911. The mini egg doesn't stipulate, the frontage doesn't, it doesn't stipulate what it has to touch in, many, in the mini egg language. I would have to go into the definitions and look and see what's defined as frontage. Um, or just street or thoroughfare. Yeah. It says lots for many ag. Minimum lot frontage width shall be 200 feet. Minimum lot area for the central water is one acre. It doesn't say particularly there public street. <coughs> I, I just, yeah. There's lots of other caveats, but if you're going to plot a piece of property, it needs to have dedicated access, whether it's an approach or a shared driveway that's dedicated for that purpose. So that platted piece of property has access to public thoroughfares. And Whenever the zoning board, when it, they approve two residences on one lot, um, we have to provide an easement to that house. Okay, so that's the easement that's part. That's what this that is. The stipulation. Yep. But when he wants to start platting it separate, all different rules come into play. He's allowed to have two residences on one property, have an easement come through. When you're platting it, it's, it's becoming a whole separate lot. But I was told by my attorney, you cannot give yourself an easement. You're not giving yourself an easement. You're providing an easement to that dedicated piece of property. The easement's not for you. The easement is for <coughs> that acre. Whoever happens to be title holder to that acre. So I guess I would say with Mike, to me the fix is, is to clarify that your easement is for that particular property. It isn't for yourself. So I don't know you know, there again, that's attorney talk, and I, I'm going to stay out of that, but I would think that you'd be able to do that. You know, you've got all these old railroad, railroad easements that have been around for years. I own a piece of property a railroad grid runs through. They still have the easement on the property. Well, it doesn't affect me one bit, but in other words, uh, I didn't tell you that railroad hasn't gone north for how many years. But if they would happen to go north, I don't have any say because they still have the easement for that railroad going through my property but it doesn't affect me at this point. And I can't imagine that there's no way that that easement can't be given for that designated property. I, I find it hard to believe, but like I said, you'd have to go to an attorney because I'm not gonna. If he doesn't have a platted parcel, right? they can use, technically they can use a meets and bounds description. They can find a commencing point, usually like a quarter corner or section corner, something in that nature and it gives directions to get to the beginning, point of beginning, a meets and bounds description with uh, bearings and distances of each line. And that can't be transferred to a deed because state law, if you're creating a parcel, you have to plat it. So on that meets and bounds description for the purposes of the easement, that will get you to that piece of property with that meets and bounds description perimeter. And that would be the way to get that easement solved. So when Clark or whoever draws up that flat, that easement will be tied to that flat. Without the flat, they can they can uh, do a meets survey and that right without boundary, the create the meets and bounds description, and then uh, record an easement with the registered deeds for that that uh, 
dedicated area or whatever. Sure, sure. I, and that still that still protects you then from anybody building wrong because it is still your private road with the easement giving one person authority to get to that residence. And he won't be able to own that property separately. He can't transfer it. The bank, bank, bank won't do it on that lease on bound. I thought they have a plan. But uh, that takes care of the easement part is what I'm saying. I thought you said that uh, registered deeds doesn't accept meets and bounds. You're, de you're recording an easement on a piece of property. You're going to have to you're plat not, it if you're you want to finance. Yeah, that's the whole of it. And if you're going to if you're going to plat a piece of property, it has to have access to a public right of way. And it has to have the front edge and it has to have all that. If you just two residences and one property, you need an easement to guarantee that guy to get to his house. Just once you throw a legal string around it, that piece of property has certain things that it has to meet, and access to public pro to a public thoroughfare is top of the list. Got to be able to get to it, regardless of who wants it. Then the road has to be named. This half mile driveway would have a, have a name. Well, yeah. some sort of a designation. You know, you've got an address. I mean, I don't know. No, it doesn't have to be named if it's just an easement. You got an address. You His could address, be your address is plus a half or whatever it happens to be for those purposes. I thought we had. A, I thought the road had to be named. And it's an easement. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a, a goofy different example, and it's altogether different. But for instance, Bellica is to get to B and B in front of the French off the state highway. I mean, you got three yeah, different people with easement there. Yeah, that's a French easement because they will not give them access directly to the state highway there. So there's a dedicated easement. I don't believe it's designated as a specific street or anything like that. It's fifty foot easement recorded on each piece of property across the front. Just for access, right? Isn't there isn't there a way you could finance and sell it to them on a contract for deed? You finance it through the bank yourself. Sell the property to your grandson on a contract for deed. Let him make payments to you. <coughs> the whole property, or just that? Just that piece. But if we don't plot it, he doesn't have anything. You know. Contract. If he does a contract for me, it would have to be for the whole parcel. Well, why couldn't you plat that piece or meets and bounds, and to satisfy the bank, get your put your easement on that meets and bounds piece of property, you finance it, and let your grandson on a contract for deed, let him pay you. Because I was, I I was under the understanding that meets and bounds wasn't gonna, you weren't gonna. A registered deed wasn't going to accept that. They won't. That's what he told me. Not as a parcel. If you create a new parcel, it has to be a platted parcel. Mm -hmm. That's state law. That's not our law. Well, for financing purposes, couldn't you pl have it platted and still do the same thing that I'm suggesting? If you plat a piece of property, it's got to have access. Yeah. Well, do your if it's and platted, you but if it's platted, can't you get your easement then? I mean, couldn't you? They won't move the plot through without the road changing, right? That's that's where we're at. No. And I haven't done a plot because I don't want to spend the money mm -hmm. and get here and it goes dead. It just seems to me like there'd be a way to get around the financing part of it, mm -hmm. but. The, the, to get the to nope. get it platted and get a access to it, then the ordinances take effect and you're caught. So if he plats this Scott and can get the easement to that plot, is there any problem at that point? The easement won't satisfy a platted parcel. The easement for access. That's the problem. If he just does the two residences on one parcel, he can record an easement for a hypothetical parcel using meets and bounds for the easement to get him to that house. That's what I'm suggesting. And that's approved by the zoning board. But that, so won't, what get, that won't give him a plotted piece of property for financing. No. Right. 
and the last conversation I had with Kevin, he was going to finance his uh, son-in-law. So this is new to me today. Well, without separating it, he would have to be obligated to buy the whole piece, at which point he can't do. Well, not necessarily. It's a contract between you guys. Whatever. I understand that. But it doesn't mess up your potential recourse if there's a problem, though. It's just in the best interest of both parties to exactly. own the piece of ground under your bill. Right. So it's a catch-22, <coughs> and I know that, and I don't like it, but once you put a legal string around a piece of property, that piece of property has certain stipulations it has to meet, regardless who owns it. One of them has is it needs to be accessible. You can't isolate it. And the third or fourth owner is protected, you know, yep. down the road. Mm -hmm. Now you could probably convince them to give you an exception when it comes to the frontage and the rest of that kind of stuff, but it has to have access. We have the frontage. Yeah, but it, you've got to be able to say whoever owns this piece of property has the ability to get to it. So the option is to get to that property, then to either become make it public or grant an easement. Is that the two options you would have then? Mm -hmm. It's still private. You still have control of it. It's your property. But you're saying anybody who needs to get to this piece of property can utilize it for that purpose. I'll have to go back to my journey because that isn't quite what I was told by. And with the easement, you'd have to set up that agreement that would protect him from the side folk development. Sure, on that's it. something he can do because it's his property. Exactly. Way right. to do it. Yeah, that's something you can do because it's your property. And then you could reach out to those other folks who've done similar things. And then you know you can what require. not to do and what to do. Yeah, because if you want to utilize so this, you know, you can put up a curb gutter, whatever you want to so do. Well, I guess I'm confused on the ordinance. Well, you know, you have a section about subdivisions, but you're saying there's other parts in the ordinances that also apply, right? So how is a private citizen supposed to follow through on it? <laughs> figure all this out. Just like you did when you came to my office to question what you need to do. We've got some are still fixing because they're not up to date with the state code too. So our, our ordinance Bye. are definitely works in progress. Yeah, when the state's got stuff in place, whether we touch it or not, that still applies. We don't have all the state statutes written in our ordinance. We had to go to the state no, statute. Yeah, I'm just going by. I don't yep. have all of the emergency management stuff written in my ordinance. He's got it in his part. That kind of stuff. I mean, but I I work with all of it. It's just frustrating when you, when you read this and try to abide by these ordinances. You know, they talk about drive private driveway access. This mm -hmm. and that, and not, yeah, those are those are specific stipulations, but they're not holistic. They don't cover everything. These that's are the frustrating part. We're trying to figure it all out. <laughs> so that's why we're, we're more than happy to talk through it and, and you know work through it. And we learn as we go along here too. But the one thing we know for certain is if you're going to put a legal string around a piece of property and plat it, you have to provide access to it, regardless who owns it whatever that well, is, yeah, driveway, yeah. driveway or easement or whatever it is, and any other things that flow into that. Uh, but you provide an easement on private property, it doesn't change ownership of that property that that easement's on. It just says that whoever's going to access this piece of property for good purpose has the right to utilize that to get to it. Fair enough? Yep. Sorry. But that's for, you know, whoever owns that piece of property's protection going forward as that's well. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, want it, I want it cleaned up now yep. before we start. I'm not wishing or looking into the future and stuff, but we've actually seen situations like this where family goes like this and go, you can't go to that piece I, of property. I, I, want, <laughs> yeah, I want some protection. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to see that happen, but that's... That's why I want to do this right. So, we're trying to help. I don't know. Scott, is there any other ones you can think of, Cattail Drive or anybody else that maybe Kevin can visit with as far as? He's visited with Cattail Drive and he's visited with, uh, where was the other one? Uh, Erica mentioned one. Yeah. Whitetail? I think it's Whitetail <laughs> Development. It's just 
like or what's the town here? Yeah. There's there's a little more private easement or yeah. private maintenance. Okay. Who's the guy? Mm -hmm. Laverne Dietrichson is who developed that one out there. Yeah, that's that's a dedicated road to public private easement or private maintenance, you know, for maintaining snow, gravel, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's more than a driveway, that's a series of roads through a right. development. Right. Actually, I mean, that's the right way to do it because that, that takes the pressure off the township then too because they've got a system that is going to take care of those roads and driveways and stuff where you take uh, Richmond Heights or Pleasant Valley uh, or the new development up on top, Keats Edition, those are all, I mean, they're kind of just hanging out there. I'm not sure if uh, Pleasant Valley or Richmond Heights, either one of them have any kind of a uh, road uh, maintenance program, I think doesn't, uh, well, I think Rolling Meadows does up north up here and probably Joby Acres. Mm -hmm. Joby Acres has got a covenant. It's their housing authority. Yeah. And, uh, Pleasant Valley has a well, There's kind of a hodgepodge of how those are all put together, but I think you're actually kind of in the driver's seat at this point on any development. You own that road, that four acres, you can have plans for mm -hmm. how that's going to get taken care of. That's but I can't, can't, I mean, I think you're caught on the other part of it. I don't know what. Yeah, because that happened on that road. Uh, I can't remember what they call that road right there on the east side of McDonald's. Um, whatever that's called, that mm -hmm. development there, um, they all pay for private maintenance and uh, Lilac Lane is the same way. Mm -hmm. It wasn't built to city standards, so they wouldn't accept it. So I guess I would, looks like maybe we need, to, you need to check on how the easement action would work for your favor. Yeah, I will revisit that. Thank you. Good luck, sorry for the complication. <laughs> You know, some, sometimes these ordinances are meant, intended for, I always say, for the for the value and the safety and the health is basically what planning and zoning is all about. But there are times when there's some unintended consequences take place that you just can't plan for every solitary situation that a, the public might get into. And boy, you've got a, you've got a prime example of one there that. Yeah. Well, years ago that property had at least three residences on it, but it was still probably owned by mm -hmm. parents. Yep. Yeah, that was Evo. It was John Evo. Yep. Oh, sure. Before we even had ordinances when yep. they had them out there. Kind of change. Good <coughs> change. Yep. They're always the best. <laughs> well, thank you, Kevin. Yep, thank you. Good luck. Appreciate your time. Do yep. it. Kendall. <laughs> Anything else coming before the commission? Exactly. personnel, please. Move it. Okay. We got a motion from Kipley, a uh, second from Sutton to go into executive personnel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are in executive personnel. Mm -hmm. We are out of executive action as a result. Anything else come before the board? Move to adjourn. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Weiss to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.